We have such a special episode today. Kiva returns to the podcast. Last time we did it in a private setting before she did a double headline at Laramie Lounge. And this time we did it for a live audience before her biggest headline to date at Cervantes. I had the pleasure of attending uh, Cervantes Ballroom in Denver, Colorado to see this woman absolutely kill it. Her vocals impress me every time. She is such a raw performer. If you are not aware of Kiva, please Take the time to go and listen to her music. She's played all over and her tour schedule is just getting busier and busier. If she comes to your city, you will not regret taking the time to see her. Let's hop in. As always, this was such a lovely conversation. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. This is Lizzie Jane and you're tuning into my podcast with Kiva. Hey guys, so lately I've seen a ton of larger shows I've been playing at that a lot of these festivals and venues are no longer allowing bags that are not clear. Well, guess what? Lunchbox Packs is coming in clutch again. They have just stepped up their anti-theft bags by releasing a fully clear hydration pack and snack pack. This is an absolute game changer for your summer festivals and events. Each bag is made out of TPU material that is incredibly durable, flexible, and made to not alter under extreme sun exposure over time. You also have the option to bring a skin in your bag on the way in, and once you're through that security line, you can zip on your skin for privacy of your belongings and to add some extra personalized fun flair. These hydration packs meet the majority of all festival regulations and guidelines. As always, these packs have all of the awesome anti-theft features as the original hydration and snack packs. Make sure you use code Lizzie Jane for $10 off any hydration pack and code Lizzie J for $5 off any snack pack. I will see you at the rave. The show today was brought to you by Vitaplur E-Boost Gum. With no pill to take or powders to mix, Vitaplur E-Boost Gum is a first-of-its-kind energy rave supplement that provides magnesium, electrolytes, and antioxidants while you chew. Vitaplur is the perfect complement to my active lifestyle, whether it's at the festival, on the road touring, or hitting the gym. Chew Vitaplur and dance with confidence. Use code LizzieJane for 10% off any order. Jesse is back. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm sorry I missed you in Brooklyn. I slept like fucking 15 hours and it was just not great. And then I felt so bad and I woke up and it was like all rainy and I was like, all right, well, here we are. Yeah, it'd be that way going to the East Coast sometimes. New York is a lot. Did you know? I'm New York is a lot. Oh, I'm very aware. I'm very aware. (laughs) I haven't been to New York since pre COVID. And I like got into JFK, which apparently was a not great decision to fly into. Okay. Got on the air tram, got on the subway. Everyone was out because the day I got in was beautiful. Everybody said it was like the first like 70 ish, 80 ish day in a long time. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, like the hustle in New York is just different. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not to be messed with. It's not for the faint of heart, but I get it. I came from JFK this morning and, uh, yeah, I mean, if you can, always into LaGuardia. You know, people shit on it, but it's the best. It's better. <laughs> it's way better. And, you know, traveling here, I think traveling for festivals is always a good parade of its own and just kind of doing fly in, fly out dates. Absolutely. And I'm glad you got here today early. You play the pool party at Soul Fest tomorrow with Rec No. Yeah. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. <laughs> it pops off. It's big summer camp vibes. You should have seen it today. That. Big summer camp vibes. Like, you've got the rope swing, you've got the obstacle course. We had Milan Boss were here yesterday. I was here early enough, and they were doing all drum and bass. And I'm like, this is a fucking party. This is great. That is so cool. Yeah, it's, you never, like, I mean, I've only done a couple, maybe a few at this point, pool parties, but I've got the crates for that. You know what I mean? Like, well prepared. Yeah, yeah. Like, those things that you're like, I don't know if this is necessarily going in the club all the time, but it's happening at the pool party. 
and I'm here for it. <laughs> and I know Reckon is gonna bring the same oh, vibe. Yeah. So so ass will be shaking. It'll be great. It'll be great. If it's anything like the last cool party that we did together, <laughs> where Mexico? was that? In Mexico. Oh, was that for Holy Ship? It was that lit. Friendship. Uh, for Holy Ship. Yeah. Okay. But just walking in here today, um, I get the vibe that it's it's gonna be pretty wild. What wild? Oh, oh, <laughs> absolutely. And like. And so like this, I was just kind of talking to Enzo and saying you never really know what they're going to look like and you never really know how it's really going to pan out. And this is so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I think I had like kind of a six flag thing in mind. And this is not that. I don't really... <laughs> It's awesome. Like, I feel the vibes. It's humid. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm so happy to be and here. It's just, once you see the production tonight, I was like, wow, this is actually Kim Cass. And everyone's kind of on the same wavelength. And it's just a really enjoyable crowd. Good energy. You're not cool. seeing, like, overly messed up. Like, it's just really nice. And, and I love when festivals like this are able to thrive. Like, last year, I think they had 800 in attendance. And then this year, they dropped at, like, five or 6,000. That's, that's, that's a huge second year. Yeah. Festival. Yeah, it's huge. And speaking of festivals, you have quite a run coming up this summer. You have quite a busy summer. Um, you're coming back to Denver July 1st for some long days. Yeah. Off of a double Larmere Lounge headliner. Um, tell me what has changed since I've last talked to you. You know, going to such a big room. The EP's been released. You're working on your next bout of music. You know, how has life been? Truly, I feel like everything has changed. And oh boy, yeah. I mean, you know, on the way over here, I'm thinking, and just today, you know, I know I'm going to chat with you. I'm just thinking about things in general. Like, <laughs> how am I going to articulate this? Um, but really, like, even since the beginning of the year, um, and I feel like there's just been a natural shift amongst everything and everyone uh, in the last few months in particular. And yeah, since then, since September, truly, um, it's been such a, the tables have turned in so many ways. And yeah, I don't know. It's like, it reiterate, like how have the tables turned? Like, are you talking like personal life? Are you talking about like career? Like, everything, like the entire world. And, and it, you know, as it been so without, but for me, everything that I've been really wanting to bring to a state of completion has really kind of come full circle and made space for everything going forward simultaneously. I love that. Yeah, it's it's really incredible. Um, so yeah, I like to be going and, and doing Cervantes after the double night at the Armour Lounge. Like, it's very much a follow-up when it comes to that side of music and EP and stuff like that, but in so many other ways, um, I feel like it'll be totally different. And every, everything is always changing, but you know, the core remains the same, but absolutely. And I feel like you always hold that just in your project in general, like right. It's it's so intriguing, kind of like the artist's layout of what we have to kind of accomplish on a daily basis, all the while staying in a creative mindset. You know, you always come across social media, which again is such a detachment from what an actual person represents in themselves. Um, very like positive and ethereal and like community based. And then when I get to talk to you, it's like this whole other side of you that comes out. And it's always lovely because it really shows you that you kind of see what you want in an artist and you see what they want to show you and what they want to disclose to you. But then there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes in personal life that's kind of intricate into art or incorporated into art. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's insane and it's confusing sometimes. And I think we kind of touched on this last time because it's very, you know, their thing all the time. And, you know, I think I've just been thinking about the music that I've completed um, in the last couple months. And I was in the on tour for the first couple months of the year as well. So that was another completely different side of things. And then, yeah, with what I've completed recently, um, I've been able to really tap back into my own uh, timing. And I think that's one of the biggest things when uh, you're putting things out and you're putting your face forward and everything like that on a project that is your own. No one is feeling that timing except for you. You know what I mean? So you really have to find your balance with it, with, you know, understanding that 
things will be, uh, what things need to be put forward will be put forward, you know, and what timing needs to happen will happen and, and maintaining like strength in that balance and not, yeah, it's so, it's you not just trust a lot without yeah. knowing a lot. And yeah. I think when you're touring too, because now you're kind of between when I talked to you last and now you're doing dates, but you're not doing dates like you were, correct? Like you're right. at home a lot more. Yeah. And I think when you're touring, you're not necessarily on your own clock. You're sure. not necessarily really in tune with yourself. And if you are, it's usually a lot harder than if you're at home and you have this routine and you have this set of balance that you're able to control. It's just a completely different, you know, thing, a completely different facet of it. Um, yeah, just maintaining, like, staying true. And again, I always, always say this, but, you know, easier said than done sometimes. Absolutely. I think about it, um, kind of in terms of like, I've never had a child, but like, you know, really it's like your, your project and everything that you do and what you choose to put out into the world, you very much, you know, you take care of yourself first so that you can allow the magic to happen. Um, but then you still have the labor to bring it into the world. Yes. Oh, you're right. right. That's and like it, a release. That's like a baby. Straight up. No, like, and you know, like once it's there, there's only so much you can do. Um, but you know, maybe you have ideas for where you wanted to go to school and this and that. So yeah, there's so many fun, fun parts. <laughs> and I feel like it's a continuation of just like self-discovery, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, like creating a routine and trying to, I, I think when you're kind of, your core is off center and you feel off, it's very hard to do anything else. And, and when you're touring and you have these schedule changes, like being a touring act and focusing on all of these things at once and you have to be a multitasker, even if you have a huge team of people behind you, it takes a lot of practice. It's like anything. It's like any skill set. It's like me learning a new language or me learning a new sport. The more that you do it, the easier it's going to get. But you're always going to have obstacles. You're always going to have ups and downs. And you're always going to have momentum and then slower moments and then momentum again. And it's always kind of mind fuck in the back of it. Yeah. Realizing how to kind of keep a state of equilibrium all the while trying to cross off goals and reach that next sticking point. And that's something with yourself where I feel like your project, from my point of view, you know, you've really taken that kind of marathon, not a sprint type of perspective. And so your project has really grown over time. And with that has come really devoted fans and fans have seen you progress from, like we talked before, being a DJ to incorporating your vocals to kind of doing everything that you really wanted. And right. now your shows where you're headlining are you and you get to do everything that you want. And, and when a larger act does book you to play support, you you know that they're okay with bringing your true self. Okay, so that's the only way to do it. Yeah, I guess that's just the name of the game, right? I'm just I'm just happy to be here and honored to be wherever I go and just here on the planet in general. I love that you have in life. Me. Like, there's nothing more to say. That's it. <laughs> and and every day, you know, I think we get wrapped up, especially like. You coming from, you know, for people who may not have listened to the last episode, I want a little bit of background on you um, and for people who are just listening here, yes. you know, where you came from, went from somewhere that was very secluded to the Big Apple City, and, and that's right. so much, so contrasting. So give yeah. me a little background just on how your project came to be. In general? In general. In well, general. one day. <laughs> um, one no, day. well, I mean, for me, um, and I've spoken about this many times just because it's, you know, really where my musical journey began in many ways. Um, you know, I grew up going to metal shows and XXX. And then um, when I went to Shambhala, when I was younger, that was kind of the... What changed the game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And for me... One of the biggest things um, was really just realizing that you can do things from a computer and you don't need a whole ass band, which like respect. I would love to have a whole ass band, but like one day, one day, yeah, yeah. One day. Um, you know, and just the yeah uh, in, innovation of of being able to go through the walls of of what things sound like and what they can be and. 
you know, for me, um, when I was young, you know, I remember like auditioning for something and not having a, um, not getting it, yeah. right? And like shit like that sticks with you until you decide to deal with it, right? And you know, so there were always things, and you know, not being that technically inclined, you know, means that maybe my production journey came later and all this, but um, through and through. You know the sounds that I originally was drawn to, and I still am surprised by this on a daily basis. When I turn up to a festival or a show, and like everyone's doing their thing, and I'm like, "Look, I love this," but like then I hear like my shit, like someone else could be playing it, or it's my shit, but like I hear it, and I'm like, "Ooh, like that is the heart and soul," and you know, really, that is why most of my things stick around. 140 and are very much sound like dubstep at the end of the day or, or dub because yeah the, I don't know it's just that it's like this gorilla like I always say this like with like and you, and you definitely dive into the deeper dub realm while keeping it your own and what I always love again is like as a vocalist myself I'm always paying for other vocalists and like right. making it show yourself and finding this like middle ground between almost like Hip hop and rapping and spoken word, like poetic shit. Absolutely. And and that 140 is just so stompy, but yet so like emotional at the same time. And that's why like all of the deep dub artists that sit like that 135 to me, 142 range, it's just so nice. And especially on sound systems when they're properly yeah. set up, it bangs. Absolutely, and there's so much space. Um, and to be honest, like even like in the last like couple months, the things that people have sent me to, like everything goes through its you know periods, but have been some of the most like some of the freshest shit that I've like heard in a while. Really? Yeah, and I'm so fucking stoked about it because like obviously I'm stoked if I hear shit that I like. If something comes in, I'm like eh, whatever. You know, it is what it is, but like. There's no limit, and not that there is a limit within electronic music at all, but like I feel like, you know, it can be very easy to get drawn into fitting into a certain sound. That pocket that everyone expects you to stay in. Yeah, or like, you know, and it's awesome to emulate things that you like, of course, but like, you know, you still want to feel the heart and the originality and the soul of, of what that person is of an bringing. Individual. Absolutely, because that's damn that's you that's you know and obviously that's um subjective you know like Very. It's, art is subjective I absolutely mean, that's that's the beauty about art that's why you can love something that i yeah. hate and right. i love something that you hate absolutely and, and what I always love about, you know, festivals like this and just the bass crowd in general is they're very accepting to a very wide variety of things. And I think that's kind of transgressing lines between subgenres and even genres on a whole. As of lately, I've heard so many indie bands kind of take these electronic influences. And I've heard people here really start to, you know, I've seen so many new elementary projects. Like I used to see projects kind of establish themselves, they were DJs, and then they add the live element, whether it's, you know, they, they kind of, it's the same thing with both of us. I used to be terrified. I was like, I'm not, I, I was seeing a band before, but then it's like being on stage alone singing, that's, that's a little out there. And then you start to do it. And obviously as you become more uncomfortable doing something or more comfortable doing something uncomfortable, you grow and you learn that it's realistic. And now, same thing with you, I get music, I see new apps that are very new on the block, but they have this very cool thing going on, whether it's the drum pad, or it's the guitar, or it's the bass, or it's the vocal element. It's live, oh my, what is that? Okay. Oh, wow. I love it. I was like, oh, that's new. I love Moss. Haven't seen, shout out mom, it's here for your set, you haven't seen it the whole time, it came to say hi. Um, you know, it, it's lovely to see that transgressing into like the evolution of dance music because I feel like it used to be it. I think that in, in general, just with electronic music, um, you know, the backbone of it has always really been that innovation and, um, you know, pushing boundaries thing yeah. to, you know, and I feel like just more and more, um, you know, like you were saying, there's a lot of uh, bands, you know, bringing a lot of electronic elements and vice versa. And yeah, it's just so cool. I, I it's amazing. 
<laughs> it is. It is. And it's and it's cool to be in it for so long to see the next like generation or like wave of apps start to come up and you're like, okay, like I was in that place at one point in my journey, but now it's so different. And now it's like you've seen that kind of like style evolved and that level of app evolved. Yeah. And it's and it's quite impressive to see how things really do change over time but are still accepted and are still like huge i would say like engagement wise and consumer wise people really fuck with and they love it and i think that's why it's it's so important for there to be artists like yourself who refuse to stay in the box you know what i'm saying like like a lot a lot of your your beats you know when you take the the acapella off of it you know they may sound somewhat similar and you have that cohesive sonic vibe but what you do is so niche and it's so different. And I think that's the way to really be able to do whatever you want as an artist. Like you can do whatever. Like if I'm gonna sing on something or I wanna make something a cappella or I wanna do something like bangerish, like your fan base has become accustomed to you being you authentically. So they're ready for anything that you're ready to do. Right. I think that it's very it's becoming and it's it's hard because everything changes so much in a short amount of time and some things don't change in a long amount of time and that's what's crazy and that's another thing where you're just like damn like but it doesn't matter you know you just keep doing you and like you said it's a marathon not a sprint that being said i'm here for a good time not a long time but like you know at the end of the day (laughs) you know I, i wouldn't have it any other way you really can if 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 for me the art is the love. The art is the way that the things are coming through. And you can't fight that because it's not you and it's not yours, you know? So it's really, don't try. And if if, if you want to, you can't, there's no, I'm so, I'm a, I'm a tripper and I'm going to go in a spiral. So just cut no, me off. No, I love it. No, but, but there's very few people I've ever talked to that are like, as in tune with themselves as you are from my personal outer opinion and you may not feel that way but i feel that way and it's like i aspire to be able to be as in tune as you are with yourself because i think it unlocks this like not like higher power but it unlocks this like thing that allows you to really take down all of these boundaries and just really creatively flow with what your intentions and your you know your experiences are and I think outside pressure tends to cap that and and it kind of makes you sometimes want to appear smaller than you actually are instead of letting it all go and you know do you feel like you've done like a lot of like self-work I guess over years to allow yourself to be that way or have you just always felt like you've been this way, very in tune with yourself? Because a lot of people aren't, especially in the day of social media where females are constantly comparing themselves to other females and looks and this and that and followers and likes and music and even in our game, you know, for a very long time it was, oh, you're you're a girl, well, you're like Allison and you're like Rez and there's only one of you that's Absolutely. able to make it. And now there's so many of us that you can't really look at this scene and say oh well there's just a few girls because there's not tons of them you know absolutely at the same time i think a lot of girls go through that same thing where they can't reach that higher power it takes them a lot of time you know so what's your kind of back end to that of like just existing and just being able to be yourself so you know carelessly like so like i don't care what you think like this is me and i'm gonna do this i think that it's i mean for anyone being you know sticking to your guns and sticking true to what you believe in and doing that there's always outside there's always fear there's always this there's always that there's energies that you don't feel there's things that you hear your own ass self talking to you um i know the self voice the inner voice yeah i realized recently that not everybody has that inner voice and then i thought i was fucking insane that, no, well, it's there. <laughs> I think it's there. Maybe they don't realize it, but it's definitely there. Um, but it's hard. You know what I mean? It's hard, and it just means that you're showing up every day, you know, as cliche as that may sound, despite anything and being with whatever it is. You know, literally whatever it is. And, you know, there are times where maybe someone's telling me 
oh, like, I should have had this slot, or this track sucks, why didn't my track this? And, you know, you can talk about that shit, feel about that shit until the cows come home, but it really has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's no... And it's not a mind to it, it will absorb you. It'll absorb all of this energy in your mind to yeah. the wrong things that are, like, creating that, like, obstacle for you to overcome that really shouldn't even be an obstacle to begin with. A hundred percent. And, like, you were mentioning um, about social media and things like that, like, it, it's just, it's very much an example. And I know a lot of people think about this and talk about this, but, you know, a lot of people really err um, you know, their biggest struggles, I feel like, on there, it, which is great in a way, you know, because everyone's just, you know, being themselves and whether they're saying, oh, this is my biggest struggle or, you know, bringing it to the surface um, in a way where it seems like it's not. I don't know. Like, maybe that's hard no, to describe, that makes sense. but everything is a reflection, you know what I mean? And, and it is hard. And navigating your way, um, it's always going to be that way no matter what technology is there no matter what comes up but like you said just tuning back into your your own compass and listening but not listening to you know the things um and and honoring them yeah no, you know absolutely and i think it's kind of one of those things where you have to make a cognitive conscientious decision of whether you're going to let something kind of alter your own perspective of a song that you loved or a set that you did or you know x y and z because now we're so easily accessible on all platforms and you know you see what other people say you can break down those walls but at the end of the day i think you're always one going to be your own worst enemy because you allow yourself to but best but, right? but yes yeah 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 no and and <laughs> that's who's talking at the time that that's <laughs> the other side of it is you know you always want to be conscientious of yourself and the things you can do better on and things you have to work on but you can't tear yourself down to the point where you can't build yourself up no and at the end of the day you know you're perfect you absolutely are everyone is and you know not to be well but like <laughs> you know like i was saying like I was gonna post a picture earlier. Here's an example, you know? And I was like, oh, like, am I gonna post this one with sunglasses or this one without sunglasses? And I know that I'm thinking like, I wanna post this one with sunglasses because I feel vulnerable posting this photo without sunglasses. And that's just the type of shit on a very base level that I'm sure a lot of people deal with. But like when it's on a larger scale with all different types of things, oh no, I'm nervous about selling Cervantes. It's the same shit as, as if I was nervous about selling a 200 cap, any, you know what I mean? Like it just, Absolutely. it increases and everything keeps coming and it doesn't matter. You just keep up, turn up, roll your love, yeah. you know, and, and revere it all. And that's it. I love you so much. Every time I'm, I'm fucking sweating. And also I like, love. I swear, I am very well-spoken in my, in my mind. And on paper, and then I come up here, I'm like, oh, no. God. No, but it's amazing because I feel like you don't, like, hold up any walls. And a lot of people, when they sit down in these environments, like, you're what I love. Like, you're like, hey, girl, oh. you, you make my job easy. I'm Let like, me tell like, you, pull it out. Come on, talk. You, like, are just for it. And I love it. And it's like, a lot of people, I have people comment on the podcast that you've done all the time because I think a lot of people just... You don't hear people speak like you anymore, and I say that in a good way, because I think a lot of people are so just, not necessarily in their head, but it's just like this societal way of answering the question and doing this and going through the movements and, oh, this is part of my job where you were like, this is who I am. I actually give a fuck. I care. I care to be here. I care to play. I care to do shows. I care about my well-being and everything in between, and, like, you're not afraid to show that, and you inspire other people through doing this. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that people are enjoying the last one. But, you know, I think it's just something also that's very hard to put into words. It is. And, you know, there's a reason I stutter and take my time. Um, And, yeah, I I think it's wild. But, like, you know, even when I turn up today, and I see you, and I'm just like, I am, this is amazing. Like, and for me, like, 
I remember like doing radio shows and stuff like that and always having technical issues. So like when I saw you in Denver, when I see you now and like you're, you're doing this, I'm inspired by you doing you and showing up and doing what you love. And that's what it's all about. It is. And that's why I think, one, I love you, thank you. And two, um, and your hair looks banging. Thank you. The colorful color, it's for the people. I love it. I love it. My hairdresser was like, Earth energy. we're going from emerald to Fordville. I was like, absolutely, let's go. It actually glows in black right now, too. That's a fun little surprise I found out the other day. But yeah, it's just, you know, and I think that's what's cool is that, especially amongst the women I know that I've chosen to surround myself with in this industry, they all inspire the fuck out of me. So it's like kind of this energy where it's, you know, I sit down with you, I walk away, I'm inspired, then I, you know, add that and I use that to feel something else I want to do. And I think that's the cool part of this industry is you see so many people who are truly themselves right now. You know, so, yeah. so many people were and like, on the dance floor, everywhere. Yeah. On, on the dance floor. Yeah. I, used, I remember when I finally got unscared to dance and it was like the best yes. time of my life. And you see that here and it's like, it's so cool that there is a creative space and that there's a space that people bring to life where people can really transparently be themselves because in the day-to-day way that, you know, the United States and the society is measured, it's it's very unique and rare to have a space like this. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of, one of the biggest things for me over the years and not just with music, but just with everything. <laughs> Like, I was a really, really shy kid. And which is crazy for me now to hear you talk. And you're like, oh, she's shy. Yeah. And he, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, like, you're not shy. You're so extra. I'm like, dog. Like, <laughs> you know, I, but I, I am, you know, very outgoing. I like to talk to people, but I always have had this kind of reserved nature. And, you know, there were things, and everyone has their things, but like that drilled that in for me where I was like, ooh, like, I should tone it down a little bit when I was a kid. And, you know, I I went up from a town show, I got picked, and then I backed out, shit like that, where I was like, yo, what? You backed out. And I remember the first time, like, getting on the mic at my Denver show in 2019. That's not even that long ago. And I was fucking terrified. Terrified. And it, it just keeps rolling, you know what I mean? Like I said, you just keep doing your thing. And you are there for yourself and that's going to help other people be there for themselves absolutely do you know what i mean well we as artists don't realize i I think i think a lot of people do and then i think sometimes we get there's so many things for us to maintain and constantly work towards achieving that we sometimes often forget the platform that we have to inspire others and and you know set a good example and you you have have to and that's your duty right that's absolutely your duty and what I think is beautiful about just like any journey in general but when you have something that is so tangible and for other people to see you know it's not like you're just at home like writing in your journal and that's amazing and stuff like that but it's like bam like people are coming to a show and you're like oh wow like there's like people here that like wanted to be here okay great and they're here to see me yeah and like you have the honor of being on that journey with yourself musically and, and and bringing it to life that is crazy it's crazy it's really crazy because Absolutely you just crazy. like you're truly like it's not it's not about you it's not about me and i'm not working for me you know what i mean it's a much bigger <laughs> thing that we're a part of always and and i think that you know the, the further along in this journey you get, the more people that you're able to touch and inspire and meet and do all these fun, cool, unique things with. And I think that's the beauty of what we do and the privilege of what we have being an artist. Because I think there's, you know, what I said earlier, not everybody's hand in the same part of decks or the same, yeah, I'm tired. What part of decks? I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Here we go. Um, and, and, to take what you've been dealt and do something so profound with them is very, very cool. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, no one knows what anyone else is going through at the end of the day. And people say that all the time, but it's so fucking true. And I, like you said, like I, I try to be very aware in every moment, every place that I have. Like I go to the deli, you know, and it's like, I don't know what kind of day that bro has had. And sometimes I feel myself like I'm fired up. I'm happy to be here. And, you know, thinking, 
I want to make this guy's day, but then I think, oh, I, I don't want to be too much, too loud in the deli right now. But like, I'm just having a good time. But you know, whatever you're doing, if it's coming from love, you you can't go wrong. You know what I mean? Like you go through the motions as you will, and you navigate how they're going to turn out in this world. But truly, if you're coming from that place, there's nothing to worry about. And everything, like you have to sit with shit though too. You know, you do have to sit with the shit, and it's fine though. You can be afraid of the shit. It's just gonna happen. Yeah. You know, and uh, sometimes I get like, nowadays, I, I feel like, especially the last week, sorry, I'm going off right now. No, I love it. Talk, talk, talk. I but, love it. You know, like, everyone has whatever they deal with in life that is, you know, no matter how amazing or how horrendous, um, that really brings them to where they are. Um, Absolutely. It's life experience that makes everything that we do move forward. Hundred percent, exactly. But nowadays, I feel like I've always enjoyed so much my life and just been a constant awe. But really, now too, and I think that's one of the biggest things was that when I first started making music uh, and and started to do that, um, it was from that place, and it always has been. It truly has. But that's so important to check back in with consistently to make sure that you're already like doing your thing but then also like enjoying because I feel like you know there have been times where I'm taking shit so serious in the sense of like maybe I get to my hotel and I'm like straight up like I'm gonna feel like shit later I'm so worried you know like really gotta let that shit go but now when there's like the good good like I'm fucking living the good good yeah when the shit happens I'm living with that too but just like I was ignoring the good, not ignoring, but like, I was like, no, I have to work for everyone else. But remember to take care of yourself. And that's a huge thing. That should be number one. I was straight up. I was straight up dying for a hot second. I can talk about that for a long time, but like, you have to be there for yourself so that you can give to other people. And that's what it is. You have to be. Yeah. Because if you, again, it's, I've said this so many times, especially in like terms of relationships, you know, whether it's a team member or friend or significant other can't love yourself and you can't take care of yourself you can't do that for other people so it's it's always it's always definitely a mind fuck did you feel like you hit like a wall like you were like total burnout like i'm like i'm going through the motions and i'm not feeling like anything yes and no and that's what's terrifying about it and it's something that's very common today in general um and just in humanity within probably the last since we came here or whatever but no, it wasn't like, oh, bam, I'm dying. It was more like I was not able to be here. I was not able to be here. It, 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 <laughs> like in the moment. But a lot of people are not able to do that. It, no, and exactly. And it was, I had like shut off essentially. And that's what's scary is that sometimes when you shut off, you don't know that you're off. Until something maybe happens you back on, or yeah, to force you back on essentially, and yeah, that was like a little bit scary. But like, I, I don't, I'm great. No wonder because <laughs> now you're good now. No, no, and it's it's nothing crazy. And I, from the outside, no one would. You know. would never know. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But that's how it always goes. You never know. Exactly, and maybe you don't necessarily feel. Um, sad or or bad or anything like that but there's something missing and it's just that's what it is your shit got too low and it's you know i can again dive into this topic on many different and levels and different trash. verbiages but um yeah having having the ability to bring yourself back from those types of, of things it's important as well and I think that no one is immune you know it's so it's like not. it's not like oh always you know make sure you're having eight hours of sleep a night it's, it's not gonna happen you know what I mean roll with the punches but know how to bring yourself back right and that takes work <laughs> for sure it always you know, takes a lot of work to bring yourself back especially when I think a lot of it is just getting so wrapped up in stuff and then you can see yourself going through the motions, but it's like, am I actually here in the moment or am I like literally detached from what my body's actually doing? 
and just thinking about something so different and so opposite of what I'm doing in the current moment physically or, you know, just going through things and it takes a lot. I think as you get older, change becomes harder. So if you have to realize that you have to change something in your life, it can become very daunting and you're like, oh, I know I need to do this. I know this feels wrong. I know I shouldn't be here. I know I shouldn't be with this person, but it's really hard to change. And it's like, it, it takes a lot of strength to do that. And then you kind of have to like rehabilitate yourself and get used to this like new normal of your life. And like, as the mental game is so much more than physically taking care of yourself is so important, but mentally, if you're off mentally, it can really like fuck a lot of shit up. Exactly. And there, there are so many layers. Um, but yeah, like you were just saying about change, you know, an example, um, I'm going on a trip next week and before I was touring, I was always traveling in general. Like I moved a lot when I was young, traveling for like experience. Just, yeah, because I love to travel. I just am someone who travels. Um, and I'm so lucky obviously to be able to travel for music and it's become where I'm just like, yeah, that's the norm, but you're still working. So, you know, I was like, I gotta go somewhere. Like I gotta like, yeah, back to, you know, my, my shit. That's a touring thing too, because you feel like you're going all these places, but right. you're not really experiencing them. You're seeing hotel and then you're maybe, if you're lucky, you get to sit yes. here with you and go in the pool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, I was just like, wow, like you, like we were just talking about, things can just keep happening and you can be, uh, and this can happen in any way of the world. And that's what I'm saying, it's like so common just, you know, for it to happen where people think they're okay. <laughs> and I'm not saying like hyper analyze yourself right now, you might not be okay. But like, <laughs> you know, like really being acutely aware of every single aspect. And again, it's, it's, easier said than done but you know it, uh I was like I need to go somewhere and it was interesting at first like the feelings that that arose that I that I was like I never would have had those feelings before where you know I've, I've only been in my spot for two years now that's a long time for me and I'm like oh shit I'm gonna go away like and, and whereas I was used to being away for music. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and just, it was so interesting. But in the other flip side of things, I'm just like, I feel this propelling to like move. And I'm just like, do I want to move because I'm used to moving or because I really need to fucking move? So, you know, just, you just got to really navigate your shit and do the best you can. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. We could talk for hours. I think we could talk all night. Long. Literally, literally. I need to hear about the new music, and I need to hear about yes, new yes. show shows that you're excited for, other than Cervantes. Yeah. So I mean, obviously that's a big one. I'm really excited because that's a quite like a cool curated lineup. Um, it's very much going to be like. Have you announced support? Yeah. Yeah. Playing with you. So we've got Joe Nice. OG, uh, Mantra, and Atex. So we've really kind of like hit all the things for me, uh, what I would really want in a lineup. You know what I mean? And they're all amazing and bring such a different side of things. So it's going to be really wicked. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, like I've got quite a full year, but it's all like quite spaced out, which is amazing. Yeah. So I, I'm doing some like different festivals this year that I haven't done before. Like, uh, like Big Dub, um, Submersion. I'm trying to think what's, what else is on there. There's a couple, uh, clubs throughout, um, yeah, I can't think off the top of my head right now, but I'm really excited to be doing some different places. Um, not the same, you know, yeah. Not that I've always been the, yeah, not that I've always been to the same places, but it just does feel like there's a different aura to Exciting my touring to go schedule. to new places. Yeah, and I'm really feeling like such a fresh, different energy, uh, especially off the back of the tour that I just did with Boogie T, which was absolutely incredible. Another new experience for me, touring with people. Great. Um, so, yeah, I just, like, I feel like, and it's so easy to, like, want to dig back through all of my crates since forever, but I'm really trying to, like, 
stay in 2022-2023. That's hard when you're DJing. And you're like, I know what's coming next. And it's like, bam, don't play 2015, whatever. But like, I'm really trying to, and on top of it, make my sets like more and more and more and more original. And like we just said, not hold it back on that because I think that I'm just kind of rude to my own self. Well, that's where you shine. It's like, if you have that skill set and you like, write this music it's like you gotta play it i know it's rude people it's so rude and you know just talking about music and and we were talking about the last cd and releasing it's like that that's really like one of my where i'm just like bitch what are you why is this hard drive looking like this right now because it needs to go somewhere and i think that like we're just talking about the you can be there for the process and the inception but there's another part of the process that is truly your duty as well and i feel like i've not been doing that as well. You're like, I need to move on. I'm like, I need to release my shit. I'm releasing my shit. So <laughs> I feel that. I mean, I feel like it's, trust me, I've been literally working on EP since like fucking COVID and like now it's done and it's like now you're like, oh shit. And here we are. Yeah. And you have to let it go. You have to let it go. And it's so amazing that you let it have that time and have that process though too, because that's what's wild. Like and once you, because I, one of my things lately is like, I'm not sending you something until it's fucking done because sometimes that external pressure is hard for me. Maybe I'll get better at that, but I'm the same way. I'm the same maybe, exact way. Yeah. And maybe that uh, body of work takes you five years and the last two needed to be written. And I, for one, like feel like when I write lyrics and this is what's happening with my EP that I just wrapped up the last week, I'm hearing those lyrics now and it's like, i was I would not have been able to release those until right now because I didn't understand the message that I wrote myself three years ago. Whereas a couple of the newer songs were written in the last week or last month yeah. and finished in the last week. You know what I mean? So you you just have to be there for that process and, and do what's necessary and listen to what it requires without you fucking getting in the way. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is, is, is it, with me specifically, is I will, I will be almost there and I will step right in my own way. And, and, cause that's the labor part. I know. I You're know. like, shit, I'm either having a home birth or I'm gonna drag myself to the hospital, but someone's gotta do it. Someone has to do it. And that's where lovely managers like Emma and Kyle come Straight in. up. And they say, okay, like, yeah. you need to rip the band-aid off and go and fucking do it. Just a, just a right amount of pressure. Like, hey, we're going to rip. Are you ready? It's ready. It's ready. Let's go. I love you. Thank you so much for coming. I love on. you too. Thank you for oh, having me. Tomorrow, pool party. going to be so much fun. Yes. 1 p.m. We're starting at noon. We'll Dance be party. There. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. See you next time in Denver. Cervantes, Absolutely. July 1st. July 1st. Beautiful. Cervantes, be there. Be there, be square. Love it. Bye, guys. That was great. That was great.